Hello, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm just going to go over some problems that uh, um, you know more than a few of you had trouble with. So um, this is number two on the blue test, nine on the pink test, thirteen on the yellow test. They give us this polynomial and say to write it as a product of linear factors. So a product would be uh, a multiplied together, right? And that's you know what factors are. So we're going to like factor this all the way, right? Factor it all the way down to linear factors which look like this, right, x minus h, um, as opposed to x squared, um, or x to the third, or anything like that. Uh, a linear factor could have maybe a, a number in front of x, but we know in this case it won't be, uh, or it won't have that because um, we see that there's a 1 in front of this. So if we had uh, linear factors and one of them had a, a 2 in front of the x, well then we get that 2x times another x times another x, and we would have 2x to the third, but we don't, we just have x to the third. Uh, so uh, it's just going to look like this, x minus h, or x, you know, it could be x minus 2, x plus 5, right? It could also be a plus something if h, h was a, a negative number. Uh, so I'll show you what I thought you would do, and then I'll show you what a lot of people did do, uh, and it's uh, all of it is, is good and great. Uh, so what I had intended was uh, first this. Okay, what is this? These are the factors of, um, I'm going to try and move this over, these are the factors, these are the factors of negative 72, the constant, right, let me shrink these down, those are the factors of the constant, negative 72, uh, and then I, I thought, well, then you'll, you know, use, use the rational zero test here, and we'll find the factors of 1, which are just plus or minus 1, and then we find that our list of zeros uh, is here, uh, just the, the, the happens to be the, the factors of negative 72. Um, okay, so next, if we wanted to test and see if one of these was a factor, we would go to synthetic division. It's probably the fastest way to go. Uh, we put let's say we wanted to guess that 1 is a 0, then we'll put our coefficients here. Okay, um, and we'll bring down that 1, get 1, negative 1, negative 1, 35, 35. That didn't work because we don't get a 0 here, right? So I'm just going to undo those things, probably, maybe. Okay, and I'll just erase this guy here. We'll try again. Maybe we'll try 2 instead. So here comes a 1, 2, 0, 0, 36. And 2 times 36 is 72. And we get 0. OK? So there's something. Um, we have at least found a 0. OK? So x equals 2 is a 0. Um, so that's a 0, which means x minus 2 is a factor, one of those linear factors we're supposed to find. Um, and what are those other factors? So this is a, another issue. Um, one was the product of linear factors thing. That was uh, seemed to be a question mark in, in some minds out there. Um, but next was, well, when we take this and it becomes x squared plus 36, a lot of you did, uh, well, you, you acted too hastily, I think. You, a lot of you did this x plus 6, x plus 6. Okay, kind of seems to make sense because x times x is x squared and 6 times 6 is 36. But what happens when you actually multiply these together? You get x squared plus 6x plus 6x. So you get a, a 12x. And then, of course, you do get 36. So this does not multiply to make x squared plus 36. Uh, so that's an issue. Um, some of you tried x plus 6. And x minus 6, that's closer, because you don't get that x term. But what do you get? 6 times negative 6 is negative 36. So that doesn't work either. Um, so what are we supposed to do about that? Um, well, pretty simply, we could say, well, if we, if we want to find the zeros of, of this uh, simpler polynomial, we could just set it equal to 0. right? We'll get x squared equals negative 36. And then we'll take the square root of both sides, and we'll get plus or minus the square root of negative 36. And then we'll get x equals plus or minus. Well, the square root of the negative, that's i, right? That's the i part, the imaginary part. And then the square root of 36 is 6. OK? So now we have a, a 0 of 2, a 0 of positive 6i, and a 0 of negative 6i, 
and um, we have a, a factor then of x minus 2 of x minus 6i and x plus 6i. And so the whole factorization, just grab another color for the final reveal here, x minus 2 times x plus 6i times x minus 6i. And there you go, there's the linear factorization. Um, so this is written as the product of linear factors, and this would have been the final, the final thing. Okay, so I said I would show you the other way that people did it, and, you know, of course, it should come out the same, uh, and it will if you do it correctly. So uh, it was brilliant, it was genius, it was beautiful. You decided to do factor by grouping. So uh, we just took this first group here, and we said, what can we factor out of these two terms? And uh, the answer to that question is x squared. So we get x squared times x minus 2. Okay. And then we said, what can we factor out of this, uh, uh, you know, this group here? And the answer to that is 36. And we get another x minus 2, just as we should when we do factor by grouping. Um, so we have common factors of x minus 2. We factor those both out. And we get x minus 2 uh, times, when we factor out x minus 2 from here, we get x squared. And then we get a 36 when we factor out x minus 2 from this term. Uh, so now we would set this equal to 0, and uh, it's not cooperating, there we go, um, and find out, well, x equals 2, and then we have the same situation as we had down here, x squared plus 36 equals 0, so the process carries through for this other solution as well, it's the exact same process from there on, just a different way of finding this factor of x squared plus 36, and this factor of x minus 2. Uh, so that was that. That was number two in the blue, nine in the pink, 13 on the yellow. Um, so hopefully that cleared that up. Let me know if you have any questions still. Um, so now we move on to seven on the blue, four pink, 11 on the yellow. Uh, and so it was just, it gave us this complex number. We know it's complex because it's the square root of a negative, right? And that's imaginary. And so when you have an imaginary part to your number, it's a complex number. Uh, and it says find the conjugate, okay, the conjugate's uh, like the easy part, right? The, the conjugate is when you just take this number, here, or the sign in the middle here, and you change it, that's it. Negative 5 minus the square root of negative 45, okay? And then it says to multiply these two numbers together. Um, do it a couple different ways. Maybe we don't change it to an imaginary number, okay? Kind of loses a little bit of its... Um, power there to teach you about imaginary numbers, but we don't have to do it that way. So we'll not change it to an imaginary number, and then the other time we will change it to an imaginary number. So we get negative 5 times negative 5, well that's 25. And then we get negative 5 times negative root of negative 45, and negative 5 times positive square root of negative 45. So they're, the, they're identical things and they cancel each other out. Um, I, don't, I think a lot of you uh, get that, so we'll not write it down explicitly. But then we have a positive times a negative here, a positive uh, root negative 45 and a negative. Uh, so we'll get a negative. Uh, and then square root, of 40, square root of negative 45 and the square root of negative 45 is the square root of negative 45 squared. Okay. And so what's the square root of negative 45 squared? Well, the square root and the square, they undo each other, and so we have 25 minus negative 45, and so we have 25 plus 45, and so we have 70, okay? Maybe we decide that we want to change it to an imaginary number, right? Um, so negative 5 plus the square root of negative 45 becomes negative 5 uh, plus i times the square root of 45, right? The square root of negative is that i part. We can split this apart, and, and so this is uh, another issue of, of simplifying these uh, square roots. We simplify them, and when we simplify them, they are a product of, uh, of roots, right? This is the product of the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, all right? Some of you had i plus this thing here. Some of you had... Uh, 
uh, square root of 9 plus the square root of 5. Just be careful. From the very beginning, we see we have i times the square root of 45, so it shouldn't change to addition just mysteriously. right? Um, so we have negative 5 plus the square root of 9 is 3, so we could have 3 times i times the square root of 5. All right, so there we go. It's in uh, standard complex form. And the conjugate would just be where we change the sign. It is not wanting to cooperate. OK, there we go. And negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. And then we get negative 5 times negative this, and then negative 5 times positive this. You can see how they're identical, and they're going to cancel each other out. Um, identical, but, but opposite, right? They have opposite signs. And then we have a positive times a negative, so we'll get a negative. 3 times 3, that's going to be 9. i times i, that's going to be i squared. And root 5 times root 5, we should see that that will be 5. Okay, so 25 minus, well, we have a 9 times 5, that's 45. And i squared, we've talked about many times, being negative 1. So 25 plus 45 is 70 again. So either way you did it, it should come out with 70. On to, again, on the blue test, number 6. Uh, and we'll use the numbers from number 6, and then uh, 7 from the pink and 2 from the yellow. So I've shorthanded everything here. We're supposed to find a, a polynomial that is degree 4. It has a 0 of 2 and a 0 of 1, and it falls to the right and falls to the left. Uh, so the first thing is this multiplicity of 2, and multiplicity of 2 again. What does it mean? Well, if 2 is a 0 and it has a multiplicity of 2, it just means that you found that 0 twice. Like, if you were to have a polynomial and do all the work and find that 2 is a 0, you would have found it twice. Uh, and that's what multiplicity of 2 means. So um, we need to incorporate that into our polynomial. Let's see what would happen if we didn't. We'll just, we'll just start with that right away. Um, let's get a, a funner color, more fun color. Um, if 2 is a 0, then x minus 2 would be the factor, right? You, you get all done with your work. If you were factoring a polynomial, find x minus 2 is a factor, and you say x equals 2 is a 0. Right, so we're just going backwards. 2 is a 0, x minus 2 is a factor, and so if 1 is a 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. So if you stop there and you didn't incorporate this multiplicity of 2 thing, then you multiply this together and you have what? A degree 2, not a degree 4. Right, that's where the degree 4 comes from. That is 2 zeros of 2 and 2 zeros of 1, so it must be a second factor of x minus 2 and a second factor of x minus 1, and there we go. Okay. Um, so let's multiply this out, and then we'll talk about this falls to the right and falls to the left thing. Um, first of all, let's think about what that looks like. If, it, if to the right it falls, it's got this kind of end behavior. right? And if to the left it falls, it has this kind of end behavior. Okay, That's what it's talking about. Uh, so let's multiply all these out. We'll multiply these together, and then these together, and multiply those whole things together. So here we get x squared minus 4x plus 4. We should be pretty good at that x uh, squared minus 2x plus 1. And we'll multiply these together. We'll get x to the fourth. OK. And then uh, we'll get x squared times negative 2x gives us a, a cubed term, and x to the third. And also x squared times negative 4x. So we get negative 2x cubed and negative 4x cubed for negative 6x cubed. Cubed. Okay, and then we'll go on to the squares. Okay, so x squared, that's 1 times x squared is x squared. And 4 times x squared is 4x squared. And negative 4x times negative 2x is positive 8x squared. So we get x squared plus 4x squared, that's 5x squared, plus 8x squared, that's uh, 13x squared. All right, then we'll go to the x terms. That's negative 4 times 1 is negative 4x. And then we get negative 8x, so negative 12x. And 4 times 1 is 4. All right. But will this polynomial, when we graph it, fall to the left and fall to the right? Well, it's got that even degree. So we know that it, it's going to either both go up or both go down. Um, but think about it, right? We're talking about the end behavior. We're talking about when we put really big numbers into all these x's. When we put big enough x's into 
uh, this polynomial. These become less and less significant. I would cross these out if it didn't you know, cause a lot of confusion. They become very insignificant when x is very large. And so on the ends, when you put in a positive number here, you take it to the fourth, you get a positive number. So it goes up. It rises to the right. And you put a negative number in here, you multiply it by itself an even number of times, and you'll get a positive number again, so it rises to the left. So what is it that changes that? It, it, it rises to the left and it rises to the right, so what changes that? Well, we said a negative a leading coefficient, we've talked about that several times, that a negative leading coefficient will fall to the left and fall to the right. So if I just throw a negative in front here, this is a fourth degree polynomial that falls to the left and falls to the right, but it won't have these zeros anymore because all I've done is change this guy right here. We, we did all that work and multiplied all these factors out to, uh, to get this polynomial without the, the negative. I'm just cover up that negative, right? And if we just throw a negative in there, well, then like that would change this. This could be negative, and then one of these factors could be negative, and that wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be the same factor and wouldn't have the same zero. So all we'll do is say... What's in the parentheses here has the zeros uh, that we wanted to have. Putting a negative in front of it uh, doesn't change that, right? It still has those zeros. But if we distribute this negative, then we'll have a negative leading coefficient. But we'll also have, when I'm done, I'll explain. We'll also have this polynomial that we could factor the negative back out of and, again, have the same zeros, okay? So this... Uh, polynomial has the same zeros uh, as as this polynomial does, right? So that it's a, a lot of you miss that falls to the right, falls to the left thing. Uh, you got this. Uh, a, a lot of you did, um, and and just forgot about the falls to the left and falls to the right. Um, and that's gonna do it. Um, if you have any questions, you can comment or ask me in class. Uh, you could write it in the sky. That's pretty inefficient though. So just, uh, you know, just contact me in some more direct way. Uh, so thanks for watching.